This video is covering common mistakes that DIYers make when wiring down lights in homes. The first mistake is not using fire rated down lights where it's required to use fire rated down lights. The scenario where you need a fire rated down light is if you've got a habitable room above you, which is basically defined as any room that isn't either a kitchen or a bathroom. However, many would consider it best practice to just use fire rated down lights throughout, as that's gonna protect the structure of the house much better in the event of a fire. You can see here, I've got a fire rated down light and then a non fire rated down light. And the difference with the fire rated one is you've essentially got a cap over the behind of it, which will stop any fire that would come through the hole in the plasterboard. Whereas on this non fire rated one, there's not really much stopping it. You've just got a bulb covering the hole rather than a cap over the whole light fitting. As always, all the tools I'm using in today's video will be linked in the video description below. The next mistake is single insulated cables outside of enclosure. The gray sheathing around twin and earth cable is for mechanical protection, so protection against being hit by things basically. Whereas the colored stuff around the cores is actually your electrical insulation and not designed to be protecting against mechanical protection. So you can't have these single insulated cables outside of the enclosure. The gray sheathing needs to go right into the enclosure. If the enclosure has any cable grip area, like this one here does, you need to make sure that it's the gray sheathing that the grip is on and not the colored cores for the same reason. The problem with having single insulated cables outside of enclosure is that you've only got that one layer of insulation. So there's the risk that if there is some mechanical damage to the outside of those cables, you're going to have exposed cores, which is a risk of electric shock or worse, short circuit and fire. The other mistake you've also got here is exposed cores outside of terminals. These need to be snipped to the correct length and then pushed into the terminal so that you haven't got any exposed copper as that is an exposed conductive part. Even inside the enclosure, it's pretty poor practice. Another mistake is snipping the earth cable on your twin earth. So not all down lights actually have anywhere to terminate an earth into because they might not need an earth, but it's still good practice to have continuity in your circuit of the earth wire or the CPC as it's technically called. While it's likely that you're going to be using the same down lights throughout your circuit, so if one of them doesn't have, need an earth, none will, it's still good practice because if someone were to, say, drill into the cable, it's definitely going to be safer to have an earth wire that is actually connected to something rather than having nothing where you've got much higher risk of getting a shock. Now, lots of down lights don't have an earth terminal, but in that case, I'd recommend just using a, a Wago or some kind of connector to just join the earth together as you're going between the down lights. There's no need to be snipping them off. Ideally, you'd fit that connector inside the rest of the enclosure, but if you have to bring the earth wire outside because there's no space, it's not so bad. It's better to have that and have that continuity. Although it is your single insulated cable outside of the enclosure, it's not a current conducting core, so it's not such a problem. The next mistake is not using appropriately IP rated down lights where it's required such as in bathroom special zones. Now it is worth noting that but electrical work in bathrooms in special zones like that is actually notifiable work, so shouldn't be carried out by a DIYer. However, many people do do it. So if you're gonna do it, it's worth doing it right. The reason bathrooms are considered a special location for electrics is because of the presence of water. So just much higher risk of electric shock. In bathrooms, there are zones for water safety. So essentially you've got your high risk zones, which are the ones that will get the most water like inside the shower or the very low risk zones where you're several meters from a shower or bath or any kind of outlet. And any electrical equipment, including down lights within these zones is required to be IP rated. If you're not familiar with the term IP rating, it stands for ingress protection. So it's IP followed by two numbers. The first number, denotes the protection against solids, so dust, fingers, whatever it might be. And the second number is liquids. So the higher the two numbers are, the better the protection is. Often you might see it as IPX7, something like that. And that's where the X is if there isn't a rating for that. So in that case, you might, in the IPX7 example case, you've got no rating for solids and then a really good rating for liquids. IPX4 means you've got protection from water spray, whereas IPX6 means you've got protection from high pressure water in any direction. Now in bathrooms, you've got zone zero, one, and two. Zone zero is basically anywhere inside a shower or bath, and any fittings in that zone zero 
must be at least IPX7, but it's pretty rare that people do put things in showers or baths, and if they do, they're typically 12 volt, so not subject to these regulations. Zone one is what's called the splash zone, which is basically anywhere immediately in above the shower or to the sides, the same for the bath, and these must be IPX4 rated. And zone two is anything within 600 millimeters of the bath or shower. So anything that's got the possibility of splash, but not likely to be consistently splashed. Anything in zone two must also be IPX4 rated. So any down lights directly above a bath or shower also need to be IP rated. Now you typically find down lights like this one that are actually IP65 rated, so a higher rating than you need, but it's belt and braces, so best to have more protection than you actually need. In a bathroom, it usually looks best to use all the same type of downlight rather than mixing and matching. So you usually find that if you're gonna have IP65 ones above your shower and bath, you're gonna put those everywhere in the bathroom just for that consistency. The difference between an IP65 rated downlight and an IP21 like these two is that the base is well sealed. So on the IP21, this is actually just the bulb here. And once you take the bulb out, you've just got a hole in the ceiling. Whereas the IP65 one, this is actually a sealed unit. So when it's pushed up against the plasterboard, there's no risk of any water getting in there from direct spray. If you throw water on the ceiling with this IP21, there's nothing to protect the bulb or the conductors from getting wet. It's not a sealed unit, it's just open at the base. This particular IP65 rated downlight is actually a completely sealed unit, so you can't even change the bulb in it. So if the bulb blows, you have to change the whole unit, which is annoying, but they do last a good few years. However, you can get IP65 rated downlights where the bulb is replaceable. They just have a cap over the fitting, but personally, I prefer to have lights that you can change. As bulbs do go, even on these sealed units, they will go after time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more.